Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Matt from Diazable, coming at you with another tier list, baby. And today I'm tier listing one of my favorite bands of all time, The Acacia Strand. And if you do or you don't know, The Acacia Strand is a, I don't want to say a certain genre because they don't like that genre and people call it that genre, but I will call them. They are just a heavy, heavy sounding band with some metal and some hardcore influences. They've been in the game for about 20 plus years. Um, I saw them for the first time in 2008 on the uh, Unearth Whitechapel Acacia Protest the Hero and Gwen Stacy tour. And I think a year before that, I or six months before that, I just got into like going to shows, getting into like heavier music. Cause before that I was into like Slipknot, even though Slipknot's pretty heavy, but like Slipknot, Linkin Park, Corn, System of a Down, like, really like accessible music but then i just started uh i would give a shout out to the band alasana on myspace that gave me uh insight into other bands and i was like the rabbit hole after that i started listening to this band that band that band and from like alasana to gwen stacy i wanted to see gwen stacy live so i was like oh they're coming in town i, know, I can go to shows because i'm old enough and out of the parents house kind of i was like i want to go to this show and check it out this is like maybe my fourth this show and I remember watching, I was like, the Gwen Stays was opening and I stayed for the whole show. And the Acacia Strand just, I was like, what is this? this? This is like the heaviest stuff ever in my life. It was, or just, they just captivated me, like the entire band. I think that was like 2008. So they just maybe would drop Continent and stuff. And I was thoroughly impressed. And I've been a fan ever since through the ups and through the downs and through the albums I do like, don't like, everything they put out, I enjoy and I'm a big fan. Now, with that little backstory out of the way, let's uh, tear this uh, their discography out. Yeah, and starting the tier list, it looks like uh, it's the album. It comes in waves, so I'm just gonna put it up here. I'm not saying necessarily putting it on a spot, but we have here. It comes in waves. They're big. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They. It's like a big concept album that they made back in like the end of 2020. They dropped it out of the blue. It's like 30 minutes long. It's one long song broken up into little segments and everything. And this one, there's a lot of experimentation on this. A lot of stuff they usually, I think they don't do, but then they incorporated. At that time, they didn't do a lot of these sounds with like the drums, a lot of blast beats, a lot of weird time signatures, the vocals. Uh, Vincent was doing some more like high sounding uh screams and vocals less low uh vocals that he's known for lots of slow down um parts in terms of like like they're known for being fast and heavy but they really brought in that doom and slow they uh slowness uh guitars and everything were a little bit less chunky and a little bit more sonically like large um yeah, it's it, it, it as the album art looks, it's very spacey, very large, crazy concept of an album and everything. And but I think from this point on, after this album, they definitely delved more into that style of experimentating with their sound. So I think this was a precursor of what they wanted to do now. And then also like I think I heard that they wanted to take the song Observer from their album Coma Witch and like kind of continue on that with another album. This is where that album was birthed. And on my lit ranking of their album, this album at the moment, I I like it a lot. It's not one that I put on immediately, but when I do hear songs from it, I don't skip it. So for now, I'm feeling like it's a B for me yeah a b um yeah and then we have their next their one of their splits from their 2023 uh two album drop um one was a faster record one was more of a doomy record and the whole like slower doomy sound and i think the whole point of it was like taking two like one concept of like going this choice going that choice it can lead you in two different paths and that's where they went with these uh this idea of these uh, albums and this album is uh failure will follow you it's a 30 minute uh album with three songs on it and it's just like doom out the ass it's heavy it's crazy well not crazy it's heavy and like depressing and like it weighs on you i feel 
and a lot more slower songs, a lot more uh, uh, strong out songs because each song is about like 10 minutes long. I still like I listened to it a couple times. I've listened to it. I ranked it as a very good album off of my uh, album review page. Now, when I'm looking at it compared to It Comes in Waves, I feel like it is a good album when I listen to it, but I need to go back and listen to it some more because I, um, I can't think of anything that's popping up in my head like remembering it. I just know it was good, but not, I'm not thinking it isn't that memorable. And stacked up against It Comes in Waves, I think for now, I'm going to put it on the C because I just don't remember much from it. I think because it's still a newer album and I haven't listened to it as much as I should have compared to the other albums. So by far, not a bad album, but currently for my personal taking, it's a C. Uh, then we have their 2017 release, which is Grave Bloom. I think this is when they, were, they had some uh, members change up and everything. I think this is one of their longest time periods where they didn't have an album out, I think. And this one's uh, faster, I don't want to say fast, a lot more doomier and crunchier. Yeah, that's what I want to say. It's a very crunchy sounding album. It's got a lot of crunch to it. It's very uh, heavy and nasty. And a lot of the songs on here, I love. Like the opening song, Worthless, is one of my top tier favorite songs. I would love to hear that song live. Uh, what else? Um, Wall City's really good. Bitter Pill, Big Sleep. Um, wow, what's the one? Uh, where it's like physically drifting, ment mentally, mentally drifting, physically drifting. Oh, I think that's the lyric. What's the, is it Model Citizen? There's that song. I think that's that song. Mm, Grey Bloom. Uh, the, oh, the ocean song. That I got to pull it up. Uh, bear with me. Um, I do love, I think this is when uh, they really were, were able to like, revitalize themselves a bit and whatnot and i like that like they it's a very very good album <laughs> as i keep stalling to try and bring it up and everything but like i think this one's very underrated and a lot of people don't like it i think the band likes it a lot but they didn't get as much reception i feel like at the time like it, they they liked it but they forgot about it really quickly abyssal depths oh calloused mouth Callous Mouth is a great song. Like, I would say like eight out of these songs I vividly love and like like a lot. And ah, I wanna put it on. Oh yeah, I definitely will listen to over It Comes in Ways and Failure Will Fall You. I wanna put it higher, but I feel like there I should save that for another album. And then we have uh their debut album and life is so long uh i think everyone including everyone involved in this i think even though it's not the greatest thing if it wasn't for this album they wouldn't have started this band they wouldn't have gone further so it has some like like it should have a little respect on it but it is far from the acacia strand that everyone knows and loves um i've tried listening to it throughout the years here and there and it's pretty hard it's pretty rough um i would say there's some old like underlaying like of what the acacia strand would become but it's just so far in between uh i th this makes me want to go back and listen to it again and see if it is that that bad i remember the production was pretty bad on it and everything and lyrically i think it was just everyone was just really rough at the time it, was, it sounded great but it was really rough I won't completely put in the F until maybe later because it's not a god awful album, but it's probably, I think, everyone's least favorite Acacia Strand. Like, no negative towards it. It's just there's so much better material out there. Um, then we have uh, their 2008 release, the one on the, the album that, I, that got me into them, the album cycle for sure of that one, and that is Continent 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 i think everyone knows this album from front to back it is straight bangers on bangers 
um i i listened to this album front to back i love it it's great it's got so many and i love that fact it, it it references arrested development so much like one of my favorite shows of all time it is freaking amazing um this is this is definitely what got me into more of the deathcore metalcore bands because they were on tour with them and i was like oh who's this band white chapel oh who's this band unearth and da 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 from them i like the other album, uh songs and other bands and so this is acacia strain is my apex in terms of like expanding out my uh knowledge of hardcore metal bands and uh i i want to say i like the production value on gray bloom more than the, the continent but the continent has Balboa towers jfc kraken uh cthulhu forget me now the combine like the combine is the combine is my favorite song probably off this album that they never play except for that anniversary tour i think it's a very underrated song the combine so for now i want to put it at the top of a it could be an s tier for me but we're saving it possibly for the next album which everyone knows is their masterpiece wormwood so it came out in like 2010 i vividly remember like i was in university when this dropped and i like listened to the case trend for two years it's like oh the continent was great and everything wormwood they put out that first song jonestown and i was like whoa this sounds good it sounds so heavy so oomphy and like it has bangers on bangers beast bottom fear ramirez terminated nightman the impaler bay of pigs the carpathian tactical new unibron literally the only song it's funny the only song on here that i don't like that much is the hills have eyes and that's one of their best songs everyone loves it i still don't think it's that great of a song but i still love it because it's on this album which is so great the production sounds good Vincent sounds good the guitars because i heard they moved up to seven strings on this everything on this is just on point they is just killing it on this record and i think everyone can agree if you're an acacia strand fan you know it where it's going you know its placement it's done so much for the metal scene in so many different ways we all know that's s tier baby all the way no questions no if ands or buts i wanted to put content up there for my personal well this is my personal um tier list but I feel I, I listen. I've listened to Wormwood way more than Continent, even though it might be. I might move it up to the S, but right now, it's just Wormwood. Uh, then we have their second studio album, which is Three Seven Five Zero or Thirty Seven Fifty. Uh, this is definitely, I think, uh, the pinnacle point of where Case Stern really started to uh, bloom and uh, blossom because they had some great songs like Smoky Later, three, the title song Three Seven Fifty, Passing the Pencil Test, Car Bomb, everyone brown noise like it has a lot of good songs on here which you know i think would hindered a little bit was the production value a little bit rough but the songs are there the hits are there and then that's when the uh, kevin joined recently uh at that time and he just dipped out thanks for your service kevin we all appreciate it but uh yeah this uh this album is really 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 good um and i would listen to it over their debut currently listed it over um F failure will follow you would i listen to it over i think i would listen to it over um it comes in ways i think it's a, it's a strong album that um people really love that people i think that part of people of the band mainly vincent i don't know how he feels about it but i feel like there's a lot of memories with it but also it's a good it's a solid album and it's good it's uh yeah it meets the love that it deserves uh next we have their newest album they're split with failure will follow you step into the light this is that shorter faster more intense acacia strand that people know for that's when they did the split those split albums um it's crazy intense it's like acacia strand turned up to like 12. like they really really were able to like fine-tune this newer acacia strand that's coming out in the world right now and with post i say i guess af post um coma witch i feel like that's when like things changed a little bit for the acacia strand post coma witch in this new era that, of uh the acacia strand a lot of fast hitting like it's just faster and uh more intense and i think the songs that hit me for this one were flourishing uh chain fresh bones 
uh, Open Wound Sinkhole with the guy from Tsunami. Like, that was like, everyone would love that song and everything. Untended Graves. Um, yeah, it's a really good, fast-hitting album. And uh, I would say, I would listen... I do think Failure Will Follow You is the better album than Step Into the Light. But I would put... Mm, 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 mm. Personally, yeah, I would listen to Step Into the Light over uh, Failure Will Follow You because it's just more easy to digest while Failure Will Follow You, it's like, I got a lot of time. If I have a lot of time to do something, it's a good song to, uh, album to check out. Uh, next, we have their uh, 2020 release, Slow Decay, which uh, got screwed over because of Corona and everything, couldn't tour it as much, but uh, has a lot of, like how they released it and everything with the two songs and everything was pretty cool. But I honestly think it has their best song of all time that they say till they released it, which is Crippling Poison that song alone has really skyrocketed this album for me like the every it is the most acacia training acacia straining song ever crippling poison and i'm so happy i've been able to hear it live mosh to it like stage dive to it it's a banger of a track like it is the definition of banger two minutes of pure mayhem and then you got other songs like uh feed a pigeon breed a rat uh inverted person Shinanamasta, what else? Uh, Lucy Dreams. A lot of, I think this was a very fun experimental album in terms of like features and doing a lot of fun stuff. And so I would put Slow Decay on the A tier. Well, I, I listen to Grave Loon and Acacia Strand and Continent more than Slow Decay, but it's an A tier album from uh, the Acacia Strand for sure. Uh, next, we have uh death is the only mortal their 2012 release which i think it's not a lot of love because it they leaned more they went like warm world but more doomier and it, like they went heavy on that doom and i think a lot of people just the band themselves the, the people themselves don't like this album i thought it was a pretty good album in terms of like just sounding like crazy nasty heavy like the songs doom blade uh go to sleep brain death uh, the Mouth of the River, House of Ab uh, Abaddon, uh, like, time, wait, no, uh, the Chamber Nautilus. Like, there's a lot of, like, really fun experimental. I like that they went more metal in terms of, like, the concept, the lyrics, and just the overall presentation. It just felt very metal. And I guess I'm more of a metal guy than a hardcore guy. But I think this album deserves more justice. I think it's a really, really fine album it's sound the production on it sounds really good it's like doomy but really really like clear crisp and crunchy and for that alone i would put it um ooh, i think because i've listened to the song more i would put it on the a tier for me over slow decay yeah like i'm listening to like i listen to warm the most incontinent then grave loot and then um, Death is the only more than Slow Decay. Yeah, this is like tracking with how much I listen to these particular albums the most. And then we have The Dead Walk. Now, back in, I think it released in 06. This is where the Acacia Strand really became the Acacia Strand. Everyone like know them for their chuggy chugs and everything. Um, great, great song list. Um, you got, what was it? Da, 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 da uh whoa shut it down like one of their biggest songs of all time angry mob justice uh burn phase four by four pity predator never prick see you next to demolisher just naming off all these tracks this 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 is a banger like the oh the dead walk is a great album and i feel like more people love it more because they listen to it when that came in like i came in two years later with the continent and i think that one's superior to dead walk but as I've gotten older, I'm like, ah, oh, no, Danwalk is pretty, pretty bomb and everything. Uh, rough production, I think, but um, overall, the songs are there. A couple of tracks and uh, whatnot, they're pretty good. Um, blah, 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 blah. um mm, just near, I'm naming so many songs. I put Deadwalk. Ooh, 
Jaywalk over Grape and what is worthless? Uh, this is this is this is a tough one for me. Um, I would put Dead Walk. Personally, over uh, Death is Only Mortal, but I still like Ray Bloom a little bit more than the Dead Walk and everything. But yeah, yeah, I feel more comfortable. I feel people might not like that. I feel like that it should be higher. And then last, we have Coma Witch. Um, came out in 2014. This is when some of the members changed and everything. This is when they first signed the Rise Records. Um, this is definitely, I feel like, a stylistic change. And I still can't believe like how many people like this album. There's so many people who love this album. And I was so excited for this album because I just moved to Korea and was like, I still want to listen to my music and everything. I want to keep up with all things while I'm away. And this dropped. I never been so like meh with the Acacia Strand before. Like other than World Demise and Send Help, most of the songs, it. It felt like to me they were phoning it in like it just didn't it felt very hollow very empty and like a lot of passion wasn't there and i feel bad for putting it on this on where it's gonna go because i think people might really love this album but i didn't think it was that great but uh i go back to listen to it now and i kind of do like it a bit more but it still doesn't grab me as much and i want to put it uh out of it, it's probably one of their worst albums for me. Nah, I wouldn't say worst because I love all their albums, but it just did nothing for me when I first listened to it. it still kind of does. So, yeah. Uh, this is my, uh, I think I can live with this uh, this uh, tier list of my uh, favorite band, the Acacia Stream. Thanks for coming on by. Thanks for watching, guys. I love doing tier lists. I love creating new content for y'all to watch and argue or tell him tell him i'm doing good or bad at but i'm out here doing it till next time guys i will see you later hey guys have you checked out any of the merch from uh Diazable that we have on our online store we have some of these designs up some cool gym looking gear fan favorite baby noodle be a fucking devil yeah some of our most Hated merch ever, but I love hate breed. Yay! Sticker packs too. Who doesn't like baby noodle eating pizza? Yeah. Keychains. Yeah. And of course, we have koozies. Yeah. Who doesn't like a good koozie? So check out our merch store, diazable.com, and support your local business and a friend who's not trying to work a nine to five anymore. Trying to do something with my life.